for a while, I had to take the ear pads out of my helmet to get my helmet on, and then would have to clip them in once I had my helmet on. Ooh, ooey. Short and weak, but we, uh, we're back. It's the Bonfire, Comedy Central Radio, Sirius XM 95. I'm Dan Soder. That just slice of delight is Big J Okerson. Are you saying that while you watch me dive into our now weekly studio munchkins studio munchkins and we're not talking about cruel terms for little people we're talking about tiny donuts little donut holes little donut holes are fucking they're good i go buy an iced coffee and jay and i have fallen into the tradition of buying a box of munchkins but now we know the 25 one not the 50 yeah the 50 was just (laughs) that was a lot that was painful i ate five donuts worth of munchkin here's the thing i probably ate yeah i was gonna say all the jelly filled I'm pretty proud of myself for getting all the jelly filled out of the out of the 50 box. You nailed it. It said walking into the building though, I'm carrying a little briefcase like I'm a child going to visit his dad at work. Like, oh, look, Dan's got a little briefcase of donuts. Well, this one had a little hint of jelly in it. Mm. What'd you just say? This one. <laughs> as quickly as the munchkins you think brought you us the apart. Bo- you think you think you took the box and found all the jellies? I did on the 50. I did you on think this one. You bought this box. So. I'm the Jelly King Donut of the bonfire. Did Let you? it be known. <laughs> I'll state my dominance in the Jelly Donut world. I wish you'd try to grab one. Oh, dude, absurd my power. Watch what happens. I will strike you down like Lewitsky. I murdered him. That's why he's not here today. He took a Jelly Donut. What's the cake one? It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. This whole box is great. Just, you know what? They're not giving us money. Just go buy a Dunkin' Donuts box of Get munchkins. Get some munchkins and come back and remember what you loved about munchkins. Yeah. They're... It's not just Cub Scout parties of your sad moms anymore. Yeah, this isn't AA meetings where they're trying to spruce things up on a Tuesday. Just in an enjoyable moment in your life. Buy some munchkins. Get a box of munchkins. It's fucking pretty good. Get a Tenzo box for yourself. <laughs> just down 10. Who cares? No one's watching you. Live your life. Realistically, even I didn't. I don't think I had ten Munchkins out of the fifty box for sure. But that said, I probably did eat, uh, you know, two donuts worth of Munchkin. You could easily do that. Well, you know, you just keep going. You if you just... bite a Munchkin in half, I'll just fight you. Oh uh, yeah. I mean, what about if you do it in a shark way, which Jacob can respect? Which you <laughs> bite, then a toss back, like a bite, like a T Rex. Oh, I tear at it and yeah. then get it back in a your bite, chops. Throw That's it still in your one mouth. bite. I'm counting that. Okay, cool. Yeah, you're reasonable. I'm still man. counting that as one bite. Uh, DJ Lewitsky, not murdered. He is in Boston, Massachusetts. Is that where he is? Boston? Because I know Pearl Jam was there last night. Oh, see, I'm happy to see that Lewitsky is out here. Hey, Enjoy guys. The show. Hey, I see that New York Mets hat again. Didn't we talk about not letting him in the building? Oh, shit, there he is again. Oh, my God, there's two of them. Oh, God. Holy shit, there's two of them. They don't die, they multiply. <laughs> It's the prestige. Oh, no. There's two of them. Oh, no. Oh, they're like spy for a spy, but the same person. I thought, I thought you were in prison. Yeah, if you guys ever want uh, DJ Jacob Patat running the boards. Jakey Jake. Old dry Jake. Old yeah. You know what about Jacob? He's all eye contact while he plays it, too. <laughs> He's real proud of it. He really has a real check proud. this shit out. Does he want to see me grip it and rip it? He's not. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm doing? What you want to know what I'm doing while Lou's humming along to some old wino? <laughs> yeah, live, a couple times. I've done too many drugs every time I've seen Pearl Jam. Never seen Pearl. Never seen a good show out of Pearl Jam. All my fault. Really? Every time. You did not enjoy it both times. I was too I fucked up. I thought the one though you ended up enjoying it's a couple songs. No, but I'm thought, talking about a whole no, show. I thought in Bonnaroo. <laughs> no, I didn't even know that a concert happened. <laughs> Oh, the light, shit. the lights kicked on. That was, was a Molly, like, wasn't it? And mushrooms. Okay. That wow. was a lot. You were candy splashing, dude. Whatever they call it. Yeah, I was nipple slipping. <laughs> you were, fl- you were flugel dorking. <laughs> I was fucking cloud sucking. <laughs> it was terrible. They kicked on like the main, like the you know the big lights or whatever when they tell everyone to go home, and I was like, Dan started sucking on his candy bracelet. Uh, no, like, oh! Oh! Yeah, Ari's like, mm-hmm. Ari's like, let's get out of here. I was like, mm, yeah. Need to get out of here. No, we really should get out of here. The great tree wants to talk to us. Yeah, dude, I was fucking. It is like you can hear light when you're on when you're that fucked up. Like it was like the light was loud. It was like I was like I need to leave. So yeah, I've never enjoyed a Pearl Jam show, but again, all my fault. 
taking too many drugs. I'm an idiot. Next time, I'm I'm just going to see them a little stoned, like a reasonable man in his mid thirties. Yeah. I was just at uh, this weekend where you were in. I did uh, governors, right? That's right. Brokerage, Long yeah. Belmore, Long Island. A lot of campers out. Had a great time. A lot of good food. Yeah, it was actually fun. I had a really good time, and it's always fun to sleep in your own bed. Yeah, it was and do nice. shows. I came home Saturday night after Providence. Providence was great. Yeah, I love Providence. Great. Falcone came out. Hey, OG camper. Wedding's Falcone. coming up. Getting married. DJ Lewitsky is going. I don't know. Do we not know? He should. Yeah, go. Christine just said that like a mom that's mad at a family member, but you don't know why. She I don't went, know. I I don't know. That's what Lou does. What Lou wants to do, and we <laughs> all have to be okay with that. I guess that's just going to be a Lou Witzky decision when Lou Witzky decides to make it. But if you want to know what Lou Witzky's doing, <laughs> why don't you just call up Lou Witzky? Do you want another Munchkin? Would that uh, ease it? Would that ease the the tension in the room? Another Munchkin? Okay, I'll pass you over the briefcase. Thank God someone wore drawstring pants today. Whoa, dude! Do not knock her when you're when everyone's on Team Munchkins. <laughs> I go, why are you wearing warm-ups like you're about to play in the NBA? Buddy, I'm juggling these things into my face. <laughs> yeah. Um, you're going to Philly this Thursday. Yeah! yeah! Oh, you had one, Jacob. Oh, now you you're fat on. shit. Oh, oh, I see it God. going in your whole body. You tub of shit. We're going to have to fucking open the walls to get you Ew. out of the studio. Ew, dude. Hey, my 600-pound life. Nobody's going to want you. Yeah, you're gross. Look, I'm at all your that. friend, so me and Dan will come over on weekends and wash you with rags on sticks, but still. I will only do it for the Instagram pictures. Oh, my God. I'm what does sh- it smell like in your folds? Oh, gross. Can't you just eat munchkins. You, that. you just assaulted that munchkin. What if he was just chewing it up and he spits it in the Christine's mouth? <laughs> he goes, baby no, bird. I just get the taste. Bird. <laughs> he goes, Christine, baby bird it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> or Black Lou comes in and eats it out of Jacob's mouth. Oh, he goes in for the nip. Like a hawk. <laughs> yeah. I like him going in for the nip. One of my favorite Will Ferrell sketches is oh. the chewed up food. Is it? It's so gross. I have a hard time with it's it. It's just so really gross. funny where he's just like, I can't. He goes, apple pie. Chris Kattan, <laughs> will you chew it up for me? <laughs> uh, yeah. I can't believe they did it. That's crazy. That's what makes me laugh so hard is that they actually fucking did it. You oh, can't it's, fake that. It's so gross. So gross. <laughs> so gross. And it's not. they're not a real family. I mean, I don't know if you know this about sketch comedy. Not a real family. Wait, what? They're not a real family. What? <laughs> what? That's <laughs> <laughs> stuck in my fucking normal lexicon now. The Chris Farley what from the decaf commercial. <laughs> Yeah, we'll post it at the Bonfire SXM on Twitter, Instagram. Uh, what I oh, it's Gwyneth Paltrow. No, that's not it. That's I work at. Um, this is with Chris Kattan. Is it Will Ferrell? Um, it's Andy McDowell. Is that the right name of her? Andy McDowell. No, Juliana Margulies. Is that who it is? I think so. Andy McDowell's a person, right? Yeah, she's a human being for sure. <laughs> No, I mean, Andy McDowell could be, it's probably multiple human beings, but I mean, the actress. What about no. Bob? What about Bob, right? No, yeah. Uh, ER? Groundhog's, Groundhog's Day. Groundhog's. Groundhog's Day. Yeah. That's not her. It's the girl you said. It looks like it's always winter on her nose. <laughs> yeah. I she go, the shiny red nose. Yeah. Are you, are you always cold, miss? <laughs> She's like, no, I'm very, I'm actually feeling quite. Family Guy's so good at taking celebrities you don't think of going at so much and going at them. Mm-hmm. Just jokes. like, But they had one cutaway, like. Well, finally, we'll get a shot big enough or, you know, a frame big enough in the shot to get Penelope Cruz's head the whole way or Minnie Driver's head the whole way. Yeah, head. and then you're like, oh, yeah, she does have a giant head. <laughs> yeah, and you look, you're like, oh, yeah, there's a big-ass head on a skinny body. Yeah, as a guy with a big head, it felt kind of nice to land into the same field where everyone with big heads goes. Can I tell you something as a friend right now? Yeah. I want you to understand this. I know what you're saying about the size, like circumference-wise and the whole hat thing with your head. Wear a size 8. Just got a new Niners hat. Go you're Niners. Tall. Best O and O team in the NFL right size now. Size eight, a big hat. Yeah. That said, proportion. You're about. You're tall. You're broad. It doesn't give a big head. That is, and I have all these problems too. You are carrying over child uh, insecurity because when you were younger, oh, really did not young, match up. You were a popsicle. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I was a bobblehead. I mean, you know what it called the uh, like one of those big lollipops that someone <laughs> skips and licks. Yeah, yeah. I was a, a pippy long stocking lollipop. Yeah, I was a uh, lollipop guild. Yeah, well, yeah. We represent. Don't they hold those giants? You giant? skip to your nana's house. Yeah. Oh, I'm a little boy with yeah. a big head. Hey, everyone passing through. Excuse Just me. Just me and my giant lollipop. Excuse me. Don't look at my bloomers. <laughs> my blo- <laughs> hey, everybody, I'm wearing bloomers. 
I'm just licking a lollipop, I'm wearing in, bloomers, I'm running in, through the forest. I'm in my pajamas with a butt flap <laughs> and my giant lollipop. A <laughs> little Yeah, but it really is. I mean, we're all like that as adults. You always carry over the thing. It is one of those things where, yeah, of course you carry with it. Because I was called Big Head Middle School. Whatever affects you in middle school will affect you as an adult. Yeah, but it's true, for sure. Because when you were younger, it looked uh, big. Crazy. Your body was growing into it. But it really was like a thing. Your head matured first. My head, yeah. Instead of like it was being, like me. I developed very young, <laughs> yeah, which my... got me a lot of male attention. Sure, my... sure. I had, but I don't a... know if I was ready for it at that age. A large head, and I honestly didn't know how to deal with it. I was getting a lot of whistles, a lot of. I mean, I'm just a kid. I remember playing uh, pop Warner football and having to buy a helmet at played against sports. And, and you were, were over sexualized like... by the guy who worked there. He fucked me <laughs> in the face. Yes, you you, don't need, you need a jock. Yeah, and he's like. What do you mean? He goes, what do I mean? I mean, let me show you. Yeah. He goes, okay. Oh, is this not? Oh, all right. All right. <laughs> it, can I leave my lollipop here? <laughs> let me put my lollipop down. I might stick to the leather bench. Hey, hang on. Let me put all my right. lollipop down. Uh, do, do you, you have my, like a plastic plate? Do you have, how big is, what's the biggest helmet you have? <laughs> Dude, the guy went in and he was like, I think we might have to special order a helmet. And I was like, this hurts. Oh, yeah, you I was said fucking that. 11. Lick. I was 11 right. years old. I was like, wait, for a child, you have to have a special order? Buddy, when I joined basketball leagues, yeah, and they just, you know, everyone grab a shirt, mm-hmm. and I would just grab the same shirt that, uh, they're giving me the same size as a kid who's six foot seven. Yeah. And like 160 pounds. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah, it yeah. would pull down like a, like squeezing a tube of toothpaste. Oh, no. It looked like I was going to burst. I looked like a sausage that no one slid a hole in. Oh, no. So you're just like all beefed up yeah, inside of it? And it just sucked. And I would try to stretch them out and do, make them sleeveless shirts and oh. wear another sleeveless shirt under it that was longer. Yeah, yeah. They weren't yeah. long enough. Yeah. And then when I played on the Comics League years and years ago, uh, talent and all mm-hmm. these like uh, Boston Comedy Club comics. Yeah. They did the same thing. Everybody grab a shirt. And I cut mine. This is so embarrassing to have had to, have to do. I cut it. Yeah. The first night I had to just play in it. Yeah. Like, looking ridiculous. And then I went home and cut it so much up to make it work that I ended up cutting it straight down the sleeves. So just like down the sides where it just hung over your head. And which you can't do. When you run, it's going to flap up and everything. So yeah. then I had to safety pin it to the shirt I wore underneath it. Oh, man. It looked insane. It looked like I was wearing a runner's number in a marathon. <laughs> That's great. What did a you, moron. Did you do it up here and up here? Uh, like up here and down here? No, I put it over my head. Yeah. Like the the neck hole was still there. Yeah. Just picture a sleeveless shirt with like where the armpit is, just cut straight down. Got it. So it was like a you know, a, a poncho. Am I wrong that uh back in City like League? A gunslinger. <laughs> yeah. You just had a fucking He's like here he comes, he just throw down three. that gun. Yeah, damn. When am I wrong or when like I remember in city leagues when you were younger, the larger the kid you were, the higher the number you had to take. So it was always like the kids in like the ninety jersey. You're like yikes. Yeah. And then like I wanted like a twelve, and it was like too small. I was like I gotta wear like a thirty four. Like what's my number, coach? Three hundred? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, we ran out. We ran out of jerseys. I'm just saying. Uh, God, I never seen a jersey that's got three numbers on it before. He goes, Yeah, yeah, no, it's special for you. When we played uh, AYL football, that's when I played in Aurora. It was like Aurora Youth League. It was Patch League for football, which I know a lot of guys are now like, Pussy. But you're like, I don't know. It was the only football league around. What's patch League. If you weighed a certain amount, you had to have a patch on your jersey, which meant you had to play offensive line. You couldn't play a skilled position. And if you were a double patch, if you were a real fat shit, you had yeah. to be a double patch, which means you could only play center or guard. You weren't allowed to play tackle. They you couldn't could, hit anybody. But you were huge. <laughs> and they were yeah, like yeah. they're basically like doing it for the brains of like the giant headed kids like me with no bodies. Oh, they're like, Yeah, this it. fat kid's just gonna fuck dude, I would get demolished by two patches. It's great being the fat kid though. You have a set position on a lot of sports. Yeah. I never did patch league anything, but like I was neighborhood yeah. games in football, just pretty obviously quarterback, because I okay. could throw a little bit, but more than that even, just like, you know, tight endish things yeah. or you couldn't be uh, a tight or, end though or, if you're or, or, or you know, short distance running back stuff but there was no point in me playing like 
deep coverage or anything. I'll get burnt immediately. Yeah. yeah There's so so many flaws in my game. And in basketball, same thing, though. Like Four or five. I was never the fastest, but I was always just down low. A coach ever believe in you and put you at three on basketball? No. Not Fucked up. No, Should but we... I only played the name. The most I ever played was like rec league was where we had coaches and stuff. Yeah. We I won remember... the championship, though. Really? The our team, play, yeah. our uh, our Little League football team was so bad, we were 1-23. I used to do a bit about it. We lost to a team 116-0. to zero. Like, Oh, yeah, you told us they about put the show. Skinny, yeah, crazy. They put skinny kids on the O-line, and these double-patch kids were just eating our lunch. <laughs> they was like, move out of the way, and you're like, why do you think tall is good for the line? <laughs> Coach Sheets, what an idiot. He was like, you're, I was like, I... Is that one strike against Sheets Nation? Uh, that is one strike. You know what? I'll count it. That's a strike against Sheet Nation. Because my dad... I haven't dude, had a pepperoni roll since dude, that day. I'll never record. forget. I called my dad at his bar at the bowling alley to be like, yo, I'm starting football. and Because he was at work. And my grandma's like, your dad's at work. But it's like during the day. Call him. He'll be there. And I called him. And he was like telling me about... It was a Saturday. And he's like, you got practice this afternoon? I was like, yeah. He's like, tell the coach you want to play tight end. You're tall and skinny. And you can catch. He's like, tell the coach you want to play tight end. Like, make sure you tell him that. I was like, you got it. And, you know, it was like the 49ers. So he's like, like Brent, I was like, like Brent Jones? He's like, yeah, you're going to be like Brent jo- Just go there. And so I went, and the guy, this fucking coach that had never coached before, he's like, oh, no. I was like, um, I wanted to play quarterback or tight end. He's like, well, we got our quarterback. You're not a tight end. You're more of a center. And I was like, what? I'm the tallest, one of the two tallest kids on the team. There's Plus, a- you get me in a three-point stance, I'm going to topple over, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm a baby deer. <laughs> this is crazy. I do not know how to support. Man, I blame... He goes, I go forward like I goes, I'm going over. <laughs> he goes, you better not snip that ball because I'm somersault as soon as it happens. <laughs> I'm going to do a tumble salt. I'm going to roll kick that nose tackle. <laughs> he goes, you go, blue, 42. Blue 47, go, tumble sauce. <laughs> tumble sauce. I, go, I go, call it, call it, call it, call it. My butt's just going higher in the air. I go, call it. It's happening. Tumble it's sauce. happening. Tumble sauce. Tumble sauce. Oh, God. Yeah, dude. And then we just got, like, all these fat kids would just, like, push me aside. <laughs> They'd be like, move. And I'd be like, ah. And you're going, like, like, dude. You, you, your head's just leading you in a thing. Like, ah. <laughs> you, know, you know the cartoons where they're carrying yeah. large plates? Yeah, and back like, and forth back each the way. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Are you bringing up the thing, Christine? Can you find the American dad? I know you think Roger. Oh yeah, man, it was. Uh... <laughs> he's like, he's like, I, I got it. Yep. No, nah, I'm going over. <laughs> yeah. Dude, that's how it was every Saturday with my mom and her boyfriend just drinking a thermos full of rum and coke, watching me just get. Put handled. your head down, homo. <laughs> I'm not his real dad. He, he, looks, he looks at the guy and goes, no, don't worry, I'm not his real dad. I don't believe in sports on dry land. I like, I'm, I'm, I'm a pool guy myself. I like swimming. Goes, I'll be any of these fucking queers in a pool. He goes, shave them down, throw them in the pool, see who gets there first. <laughs> yeah, man, it was fucking rough, that coach. And then the next year, we had this like cool old black dude was our coach. And I was like, hey, I want to play tight end. And he's like, yeah, what were you playing? And I was like, center. And he goes, God damn it. Because <laughs> he got what? the whole team. And he was like, you guys are awful his his nephew hakeem was our running back awesome breaks his arm in the first scrimmage of the season we go zero and eight <laughs> he's just fucking hakeem was awesome and he breaks his arm he's like hakeem's out the season you're like god damn it and then we just got lit the fuck <laughs> like up. we didn't coach. lose his bad but we got lit coach oscar was so awesome this old black dude named oscar and he's like man and he's like what he's the center he goes oh god damn it because he's trying to recorrect everything <laughs> Oh, man, that was brutal. I like having a bad coach, doesn't know anything about the game at all. He goes, Dan, what do you play on the team? He goes, uh, he told me I play Goblin. <laughs> yeah, I, I play know. Go-Getter. I don't think he knows what defense is. Yeah, uh, ball smacky downy guy, he, yeah. he said. He was just like, he looked like the perfect football coach. He was like a big fat dude with monstrous calves, yeah. and he wore like glasses and a hat really well at the same time. And his pants zipped, but then... Hooked. Nice try. Yes, they did. He had Thanks those gray you. gym, sh- uh, the fucking coat shorts. Of course he did, Dan. They all do. Yeah. And, he, and they make those in every size. And he was the nicest guy in the world. Now I'm realizing he was like 28 and just didn't know just, football. I'm starting to think he may have molested me. I'm thinking he had all of us fuck each other. <laughs> yeah. He just, we just, that was when we lost 116 to zero. My mom was like, I don't think. Your coach knows what he's doing. You're like, yeah, we got lit up. Yeah, those shorts from Days and Confused. Those are the exact ones he wore. Yeah, he would just be like, oh yeah, he was huge too. He's a big dude. You would think the he guy would who know... yelled at me, the guy who yelled at me, and uh, was that fucking uh, 
the guy was wearing those pants that yelled at me, if I don't get the lead out of my ass, he's going to bite it out. Oh, all right. Yeah, yeah. It was, that's when I quit. <laughs> I faked an injury and left. I told you about when we were at football camp in high school, and we had this guy that used to play football at our high school come back as a coach, and he was like an assistant coach or whatever. And we were playing at this football camp in Kearney, Nebraska, and he got hammered with all the coaches and showed up for the morning session still hammered. And he was like trying to motivate us, but it was just severely inappropriate. He's like... If you guys don't love this, if this shit ain't making your dick hard, I don't know what's wrong with you. And everyone's like, what? <laughs> like, the whole time, he had, like, chew in his mouth. He's like, if your guys' dicks aren't rock hard right now to go out and play these guys, you're like, yeah, no, 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 it's a different emotion. I think we're more uh, angry and ready to tackle. I don't think we want to fuck these guys. It was a really weird you thing. Want, look, so when, they, weird. when you're on top of him, you want him looking up and you let him know. Like, he's staring oh, right in your I eyes. Bet, I bet you want to. Y'all both won. He goes, oh, I bet you guys are just looking over there wanting to kiss their sweaty necks under those helmets. Oh, just rubbing them cups together. <laughs> feeling your ball hairs get between the holes. 